Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is a hard message, but this is what the Lord has laid on my heart to say to you this morning. Uh, there's, there's a preacher who is now deceased. I forget which one it was. <laughs> um, but he said that it's a poor sermon that offends no one. So, you know, a sermon should be convicting. Um, so I, I make no apologies for giving a hard word this morning because it's needed. Um, I want to talk about the once saved, always saved issue. Um, I, I don't believe in that at all. God's Word says, uh, 1 Peter 1.16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And Ephesians 1.4 says that He chose us from the foundation of the earth to walk holy and without blame before Him in love. And let me see, Matthew 5.48 says, be, be ye therefore perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. And then you have Hebrews 12.14, which says, Without holiness no man shall see God. You know, these are the verses I usually street preach with, as well as 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10, which says, Be not deceived, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, homosexuals, drunkards, liars and thieves, revilers, uh, extortioners, people who swindle. Okay, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. So God's word clearly says that, you know, you cannot say the sinner's prayer and then not follow God. You, so many say the sinner's prayer, and they think they're good to go. And this really hits home with me because I was saved. I, I grew up going to a Baptist church. I was going to church before my feet could hit the floor, sitting in the pews with a coloring book with my sister. And um, I was raised in a Baptist church, and somehow, even though I was the idea of coming away from your sin, the, the huge necessity of that just never hit home with me, and I backslid for many years, many years. And then I came back to the Lord and, you know, repented and cried out to Him, and He showed me all my sin, and, and He showed me that, you know, the He showed me that, okay, I went through a specific time where I had specifically done that, and he very specifically showed me just how sinful I was. Even though you don't smoke, even though you don't drink, okay, I came away from those things. Even though you don't do those things, he showed me that you still sin in your inner being. You have, if, you, if you have resentful, hateful thoughts towards someone, the Bible says if you hate a man in your heart, it's the same as if you committed murder. You're murdering that person's spirit. You're also injuring your own, by the way. But the Lord showed me that even in resentful thoughts towards others, anything, let's just put it this way, anything that comes away from God's love, anything that violates God's perfect love is a sin. He showed me that. Okay, I don't care whether you believe it or you don't. Some will receive this message, those that have ears to hear, and some will not. Some will sit up and debate it. But um, that's the bottom line. He showed me. And I went through a phase of just, you know, prayer, in, intense prayer. It lasted for about two weeks. And not only was I praying intensely, I would walk around and pray. I like to walk and pray. <laughs> I like to sit and pray too. I like to drive and pray. But I like to walk and pray. And um, I just walked around and prayed and prayed for him to open my eyes and lift the veil. And let me tell you, that is one powerful prayer. If you pray for God to show you your inner self and to show you all about what sin is and how sinful you are in your inner self. Believe you me, he will oblige big time. Okay, I was in tears almost constantly for like a two-week period. I kid you not. 
I kid you not. I would think of he would the Holy Spirit would move on me and bring some sin to mind, some long ago, long forgotten sin to mind. And I would weep over that. I would sit and weep over that. This was several years after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he began to really show me things. And as soon as I wept and repented over that, he would bring to mind two more sins that I needed to repent for. That before, I, I never would have even really thought of them as sins, you know? Just, you know, an, an unkind word to somebody. If, if it goes against God's love, then it's sin. It's sin. And so we're all sinners. We can never be perfect. We can never be perfect. But it's the striving for perfection. It's the striving to live holy that counts so much. He sees your heart. He's faithful to forgive, even when we repeatedly, repeatedly go against, you know, his love. He's faithful to forgive, but you need to be making progress at it. Here's the key thing. You need to be making progress at it. If you're not making good progress at it, then, you know, whoever is, we need to keep working on ourselves. And, I'm, hey, I'm preaching to myself, too. We need to keep working on ourselves. Because God wants us to be loving. He wants us to be kind. He wants us to not hold resentment. Holding resentment, did you know that it can make you ill? Some preachers, that I've heard them say that it causes cancer. You know, healing preachers with the healing gift. You know, it can make you physically ill to hold a grudge against someone. And, you know, I know many will come out against this. Well, once saved, always saved. Well, the Bible says that no one can pluck you out of his hand. Well, yes, but, okay, I heard one preacher describe it perfectly. Yes, the Bible says no one can pluck you out of his hand once you're saved. But you, of your own free will, can choose to walk out of his hand. You can choose to walk out of his hand and to turn your back on him and on trying to come away from your sins you can turn your back on him and I don't know I, I'm just a human being I don't know when that point occurs but let me tell you that if you're turning your back on God if you're walking in sin and it's, and it's deliberate you're in danger you are in great danger right now I'd be in fear of uh, I'm in fear and trembling of uh, Hebrews 10.26 Hebrews 10.26 says that if a man sins willfully there therefore remains no more sacrifice for sin. Okay, that's a chilling verse, my friends. Okay? If you sin willfully there's no more sacrifice for your sin. Meaning at a... I take that to mean at a certain point God will get fed up with unrepentant sinners that are walking around saying, Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I sit in a church pew once a week. No, if you're not trying to live holy, then you're not obeying the Holy Bible. You're not obeying the Holy Bible. And it's all about the heart. You know, He will forgive us many, many times. You know, and... But the thing is, we should, like I said, we should be making some progress, some good progress. If you're not making good progress at trying to stop sinning, then that shows you're not trying hard. It shows you're not striving for holiness. Okay, I repent daily because the simple fact is, say, say a person would never, okay, let's just say that a person would never commit an outward sin, such as lying, stealing, you know, going to get drunk, sleeping around, having sex before marriage. Say a person never did any of that. The Bible shows that God goes, God judges by your heart. because We see that in the verses that it says that if a man lusts after a woman, it's as though he's committed adultery in his heart with her. And if, if a man hates somebody and has hatred in his heart, it's as though he's committed murder. That right there shows you that God judges a higher level, a higher level 
than the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments is the kindergarten jumping off point. Okay, this is just my opinion. It's the kindergarten jumping off point. Okay, there's, there's a greater level. There's a much higher level. He judges by our hearts, and he then judges what's in our hearts as well as outward sin. Okay, it's not all about outward sin. It's also your inner person. If you're holding a grudge, if you're feeling resentful and you hold on to that, you know, you need to let go of it, and you need to let go of it now because the Lord is coming very, very soon. Okay, he is, and... You know, not everybody's going to go in the rapture. He's going to judge you by your heart. He's going to judge you by how hard you tried to stop sinning. Okay, you're not going to tap dance your way into heaven because you sat in a church pew once a week and you did some good deeds. You helped the poor. You, uh, you know, helped, you know, sick people or, or whatever it is you did. You gave to charities or whatever it is that you did. Those are wonderful works. They're very wonderful works. And as a Christian, we're all expected to do good works and show good fruit. But he, he's going to judge you by your heart and how hard you tried to live a holy life. Okay. I've got things to do, places to go, people to meet. <laughs> so I'm going to end this here. It's a hard word. But uh, this is what God gave me this morning, you know. And so I have to put this out there. And God bless you all. Just, you know, try to do the best you can. Repent daily. And try to make progress. You know, let's all do that. Preaching to myself too. Okay, I love you guys.